This is the Burj Khalifa. It's the tallest building in the world. It has 163 floors, and it's twice as tall as the Empire State Building, and three times taller than the Eiffel Tower. The total weight of the concrete for the building's foundation is 110,000 tons. That's like 2,200 Boeing 737s, or 50,000 SUVs, or 69,000 hippos. It took 22 million human hours to build. That means that if you were to build Burj Khalifa by yourself, it would take you about 2,500 years to do it. And now, imagine that huge thing slowly sinking into the sand until even its spire is underground. Skyscrapers are usually built on solid ground. Take a skyscraper in New York and dig a little deeper under it. There's always some kind of rock foundation to support the weight of the building. But if you dig a hole in Dubai, you'll only find sand. In theory, the whole city should have sunk in the sand, but it's still there. The main reason the Burj Khalifa stands firm is that the sand for the building's foundation was brought from Australia. Wait, but Dubai is built in a desert. There are billions of tons of sand there. Well, that's right, but the problem is its shape. There are lots of dust storms there. The wind picks up sand grains. They rub against one another, get polished, and gradually turn into microscopic balls. This makes the sand doughy, almost like snow. And if you squeeze a handful of such sand, there will be a lot of air between these balls. That's because they don't cling to one another tightly. But usually, sand grains are shaped like diamonds. If you squeeze such sand in your hand, the grains will press against one another like puzzle pieces. This way, they can withstand intense pressure. So, engineers imported millions of tons of sand to Dubai to create a strong base for the foundation of the building. The second thing about this type of sand is friction. The less smooth it is, the harder it is for you to slide on it. The building will literally cling to the sand with its foundation. Now, let's sneak a peek underneath the Burj Khalifa. First, the engineers drilled 192 holes, each about 164 feet deep. That's three times the length of a New York City subway car. Then, these holes were filled with concrete and about 39,000 tons of steel rebars to reinforce the structure. These are called piles. Concrete resists compression well enough, but it doesn't fare well when it gets twisted or bent. Luckily, steel rebars are great at dampening those forces. The sand around the piles is tight against the concrete. The friction between the sand and the piles keeps them from falling deeper. It's like sticking your hand in the sand at the beach. It can easily go down a dozen inches, but then the friction will stop it. When the piles were ready, it was time to create the base of the building, something like a concrete pillow. It's shaped like a flower with three petals, but this is not only for beauty, it's also for reliability. When you step on doughy snow with your feet, you fall all the way down to more solid ground. But if you wear snowshoes, you can walk on the snow surface. This is because your weight is distributed over the snowshoe area. The shape of the base of the Burj Khalifa has the same function. It distributes the construction's weight evenly so that the building doesn't sink into the sand. When the base was ready, workers began constructing the building itself. Whoa, it really swings a bit. Don't worry, it's done on purpose so that the skyscraper doesn't collapse. If you make the construction too stiff and don't let it swing, at one point, a strong gust of wind can just break it at the very base, and it will fall. So all skyscrapers are made a bit flexible. When the wind blows, the skyscraper tilts a little. This puts a lot of force on one side of the building's foundation. But concrete tends to shrink slightly, which dampens that force. Then the concrete decompresses and returns back to normal. When the wind is especially strong, the spire of the Burj Khalifa can sway six and a half feet. The architects have come up with an even crazier idea for Dubai, a spinning building. It'll be an ordinary skyscraper, but each floor will rotate 360 degrees. Engineers are planning to install a rigid rod inside the skyscraper. It'll hold the entire weight of the construction on itself. Then each floor of the building will be attached to that rod, and the inhabitants of each floor will be able to choose the direction and speed of rotation. So, building on sand is actually quite reliable and simple. It was much harder to build skyscrapers in Manhattan. There's hard rock that can support a skyscraper there, but it lies 10 stories deep underground. So, engineers came up with a solution. These are wells. First, a concrete ring is placed on the ground. 
Workers start digging a hole right underneath it. They remove soft soil, and the concrete ring begins to sink under its own weight. The builders then put another ring on top of it and continue digging. One by one, the rings go lower and lower. A small crane helps to lift the soil to the surface. It's essentially a vertical tunnel that leads to nowhere. When the well reaches the rock hidden underneath the soil, the builders climb back to the top. The well is then filled with concrete. It looks like a giant pile. A dozen of these powerful piles can support a large skyscraper. But it's much harder to create a building foundation in a seismically active zone. That means a place where earthquakes frequently happen. The method of protection against them is simple. Like with high winds, you need to make the building flexible. Let's look at the foundation of such a construction. Good old piles hold the enormous weight of the skyscraper, but the concrete pad of the building itself stands on huge springs. During an earthquake, the ground shakes and moves from side to side, but the springs dampen and compensate for the movement, so the building stays in place. Also, engineers surround buildings in earthquake zones with concrete circles underground. So, here's a skyscraper with its foundation. Here's one ring around it, and here's another. When an earthquake hits and the ground starts to shake, these rings dampen the force of the earthquake. And if around the rings it feels like strong waves, inside the perimeter, it's like a calm bay. Another option is to reinforce the building with steel beams. You may have seen these things on bridge piers, but in this case, there are small cylinders on each beam. Each cylinder is filled with oil and has a piston. When the building starts to swing during an earthquake, the piston starts to compress the oil in the cylinder. The oil turns the mechanical energy from the swinging into heat. This dampens the energy released by the earthquake. And sometimes, engineers have to construct a building in a place where there's a lot of water in the soil. If you drill a hole for a pile there and fill it with concrete, the water will wash out the cement or keep it from drying out. In such cases, you have to freeze that water. To do it, builders make a lot of small drill holes at the construction site. Then they put pipes into these holes and create a connected pipe system. There's a similar pipe system in your fridge. It's hidden under the inner paneling. Now, we pump some liquid nitrogen inside. The water gives off its heat to the liquid nitrogen and starts to freeze. Meanwhile, the workers have time to fill the pile holes with concrete. But water in its ice form takes up more space than in liquid form. So when the ice melts, the ground sags a little. So what if you want to build a city on water, like Venice? Then you'll need long piles. The builders of Venice used wooden ones. They had to get to the bottom of the lagoon first. And then they moved a few more dozen feet deeper through the soft clay soil until they reached the hard rock. The builders drove such piles around the perimeter of the future building. And the construction itself was built in such a way that most of its weight rested on the outer walls. If you dive underwater in Venice, you'll see hundreds of thousands of such piles. The task is more difficult if you build a bridge. In addition to a solid foundation, you have to take into account thermal expansion. The rule is simple. When something gets hot, it expands. And when it cools, it shrinks. Look at railroads. There is a gap between each rail. The clatter of the wheels you hear when on a train is born exactly on these gaps. When the sun heats the rails in the summer, they extend. This creates tension inside the metal. Then the rail can bend sideways or even upward like a worm. But if engineers have provided such gaps, the metal will expand and fill that space. A bridge is exactly the same as a huge rail. And in hot weather, it can expand too. So engineers leave gaps there on purpose. You can see them on the surface of the bridge. They're usually covered with a sheet of metal that looks like a comb. When the bridge heats up, these combs come together.